Hi folks, welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel and day seven of our Tacoma to Tundra trip. We have finally reached the Arctic. We are standing right here at the Arctic Circle, but by the end of the day, we'll be even further north at the Arctic Ocean in Tuk Tuk Tuk. I can't wait to get there. Let's give her. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Peel River Ice Crossing. And yes, it is still here. We made it. We are getting north of the bridges. So far, there is no sign that they're going to be breaking up. So it sounds like we're going to be safe. Although you can see even out there on the bridge itself, I mean, there's water on top of the ice. There's all kinds of slush. And then you can see up here, everything's turning to mud. So I give this, you know, two, three more weeks. And I'm sure she'll be busted up maybe even sooner than that. We'll have to keep an eye on it just to see how much we beat it by. Alors, nous sommes rendus à notre deuxième pont de glace. Celui-ci est un peu plus long. On traverse la rivière Mackenzie. Assez extraordinaire. Ooh, look at the cracks in it. How do they grade this? Oh, wow, yeah, no kidding. It's a little sloppy down here. Yeah. Well, folks, now we are here on the Mackenzie River. And uh, obviously, it's supporting us. It's still well frozen up. It's still rated for 64,000 kilograms. So quite a bit of weight, obviously. But you know what, it is one degree Celsius. It's been just a hair above freezing today and things are getting a little soft. Yeah, listen to the tires. It's getting slushy and sloppy. Yeah, absolutely. I heard a guy last night in a hotel say that they'll actually keep this open when there's a foot of water on it. You're driving through a foot of water on top of the ice. That's sort of the last gasp. That's scary. But honestly, we keep talking about how we really seem to have nailed a window here, a window of weather where we're not totally freezing, right? It's been right around zero pretty commonly every day. And uh, on the flip side, everything's still frozen up enough for us to get up here and do this. So if we had been here two weeks ago, it probably would have been minus 20 right now. Well, we've we, been checking the temps all the way along. Yeah. And, and up to a week ago, it was still minus 20. Yeah. So now we're only down to about minus three or four overnight. And currently it's one degree and mushy. Yeah, it's definitely a, a cool experience. And now we'll do our ice road truckers thing. We could also die at any moment. Oh, this ice you know crash. what? I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my door open just in case. <laughs> in case I got to jump for it. <laughs> yeah, I just don't feel that worried. And you know what? The biggest thing is you got to trust the guys who run this road. There's obviously people out here every single day checking the conditions. They know what they're talking about. So if they say you're good, you're good. Yeah, exactly. I'm good with that. Now we're getting to the other shore, and man, does this look rough. Oh, poor trailer's getting beat. You know how you can tell we're getting close to the ocean? The 
roads have straightened out. When we were coming through the mountains and the hills yesterday, everything was twisty windy, but slowly but surely, we are getting totally into the tundra. Things are flattening out, and the road is now just dead straight for basically as long as the eye can see. It's definitely a bit of a different experience than the last few days of switchbacks and hairpins and constant steering. Well, folks, here we are in Inuvik Northwest Territories, and of course, up here, you can't bury anything, so the fuel tanks stay above the ground, and that's where you fill from. Next, next stop, Tuck. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are up the highway now. We're off the Dempster, we came through Inuvik, and now we are on the Inuvik to Tuck Dayuk Tuck Highway. This is the uh, the, the freshest piece of road, shall we say, in this journey. It was only completed in 2017. Prior to that, if you wanted to get up to Tuktoyaktuk, you either had to fly in during the warm months or you had to drive up on the frozen river during the cold months, but that is no longer the case. Now we have a road that connects Canada from ocean to ocean to ocean in the north. So all three of our coasts are now connected by roads. And uh, talking about the road, I think this is maybe the roughest road we've been on yet. Once again, it's thawing out, but I think that winter has only just left this part of the world. And of course, once the snow and the ice really kind of thaws off the road, well, what it leaves behind is a mess. So this road is potholy and soft and muddy, and especially around the bridges, when you're coming off either end of the bridges, there's about eight bridges on this road. Uh, you really gotta slow down. And so far, I don't think we're too worried about the trucks. But we're worried about the trailer. The, the trailer is doing well. it's getting beat on. Matthew was worried about one of the bearings and it's covered in mud. Any of the little plastic uh, marker lights that were down low were already messed up. There was a hanger for the door that's all blasted off of there. So we are hopeful the trailer makes it the whole way, but it just goes to show you that, yeah, when you bring things up here, they get worked. Now, including these trucks. Now, we're running here in the Pro Empty. And I do have to say that I think this is the perfect truck for this road. This is exactly the kind of conditions that this truck is meant for. I feel great about it. I think it's eating it up nice, actually. We're kind of slowing down a little to make sure the trailer can keep up. If they weren't back there, we could really be flying. Yeah, there's no doubt that uh, on this nasty washboard, the suspension works really well. And it holds. It, it, <laughs> I haven't really had it kick out yet, so pretty happy about that. Yeah, and I think part of that, a big part of that, are the tires. These are fairly aggressive all-terrains right from the factory, and they're very wide tires. So I was noticing that too. On these gravel roads, in two-wheel drive, when, when normally you'd expect the butt end to start stepping out, it just doesn't. It feels planted, yeah. and that's in two-wheel drive. So I had the same experience, and I'm mostly chalking that up to just how, uh, how much grip these tires are giving us. And now when it comes to landscape, it's entirely different now. We are in the Mackenzie River Delta, which is essentially a massive swamp that, I mean, dumps out and drains out into the Arctic Ocean. Um, everything here is mostly flat, nice rolling hills. And we haven't seen them yet, but we know they're coming. We're about to start seeing the pingos. These are a really unique part of the terrain up here. They are essentially small ice mountains. The ice forms underneath the uh, earth and then slowly starts to push up so you get these earth covered ice mountains which just look incredible in this landscape so as soon as we start spotting the pingos we'll show you and then next up arctic ocean and uh, unless something insane happens right now i, I think we're gonna make it <laughs> shouldn't peak too soon though you just never know I wanted to quickly issue a correction. In an earlier video, I said you only get one year free of Toyota Drive Connect. Well, it's actually a three year free trial on the 14 inch touchscreen. And that includes things like the destination assistant and the intelligent assistant. You can get Drive Connect on the smaller screen as well, but it does require a subscription. 
So the basis of what we talked about is still true. Eventually, you're going to have to pay a subscription fee to get all of these services in the new Toyota infotainment system. That is a change from the old system, and on the positive side, at least you can now get navigation and all of these services on any trim level of Tundra. That wasn't like that before. But of course, on the negative side, you will have to pay a monthly fee to have access. We're still running up the tuck, but we had to stop here to show you guys one of, if not the last tree. North of here, there's absolutely no trees because you go north of what is called the tree line. Trees just can't grow here. It's very much a desert climate. The tundra is actually a desert, and that's why you get all of this kind of scrub brush, these little sort of bushes and the moss. So it looks more like what you're gonna find in Arizona than the trees that we passed in BC. And what are we waiting for? Let's keep rolling down the road. and I hope you have, we started in the Pacific Ocean where I got a chance to sample the salty water. Out here I can't do that, but I can take a nice bite of some Arctic ice. Oh, that's fresh right there. Now behind me, there is 30 miles of ice before you hit the open ocean, and that ice is seven feet thick. So yeah, you know what? Even though it's the end of April here in the Arctic, it's still the winter. Larry King Live, we go to Howard Eller at the Arctic Ocean. Howard? So everybody, this is it. Here we are, we've made it. We are at the Arctic Ocean. This is the end of the road. It's been 4,000 kilometers, seven days. And behind me, both of these tundras, they're still in one piece. Our trailer, it's worse for wear, to say the least. The Dempster has done a number on it. But generally speaking, Everything is okay. We've hit a nice window of weather. And hey, from here, we got nowhere else to go. You head off that way, that's Russia. We're not going there. So we still got a thousand K to go back. But right now, we're going to take a few minutes and celebrate the fact that we made it. Ça y est, on l'a fait. L'océan Arctique, on est à Tukto Yaktok. Il fait environ moins 2 degrés. Il y a un petit vent froid. Et croyez-le ou non, on arrive ici et il y a même des courses de motoneige. On a un gars à côté de nous qui vient d'arriver de Californie avec sa voiture. C'est absolument la fête, c'est absolument spectaculaire. Et surtout, nous avons réussi. Il ne reste plus qu'à retourner à la maison. Merci! After leaving the ocean, we headed back to Inuvik and spent the night there. The next day, we woke up to a cold, frigid frost and fog hanging thick in the air. We drove through that and completed the Dempster Highway in one shot, and we wound up in Dawson City, Yukon. question we've heard a lot from you guys is where exactly does this TRD Pro Tundra stack up in the landscape of off-road half-ton pickup trucks and you know what luckily enough dad and I were just down in California two weeks ago seems like a world ago now in a whole different landscape but anyways and we were driving the new Chevy Silverado ZR2 hopefully you saw that video on the channel if you didn't it is there go find it 
that truck, honestly, to me, right now, feels like the most direct competitor to this truck. And then we have Raptor and TRX that kind of sit a, a step above these two in terms of just suspension travel and power and everything else. So yes, if you're looking for you know the direct competition, I think this uh, Tundra best competes with that Chevy. And that is to say, neither of them are the over the top crazy packages that Ford and Ram have, but both of them are great off-road trucks and also competent daily drivers. They really kind of walk that line and they both do a nice job. So if you want to compare, that's what I would uh, shoot for. So I am standing in Dawson City in the Yukon. That is a territory in northern Canada, but it is also the site of the famous Klondike Gold Rush. This is where gold was discovered in 1898 that sparked a gold rush that brought tens of thousands of people to this spot in a matter of two years. Dawson City went from a tiny hamlet to an explosive population of over 30,000 people that came up here seeking their fortune. Now, of course, we've been up here testing these Toyota Tundras, but this is such an iconic place that we decided we'd take a little time and show you some of the sights. Nestled on the banks of the Yukon River, the small town of Dawson, which was really just a camp at the time, saw over 100,000 fortune seekers come through its borders from 1896 to 1899. In 99, gold was discovered in nearby Nome, Alaska, and that really sparked the end of the gold rush in Dawson as thousands of people started to leave and continued to leave for the next two decades. At its peak, Dawson was a booming frontier town full of saloons, banks, restaurants, and gambling halls. And it is said that more fortunes were won and lost at the card table in town than out in the hills. One of the more interesting historical sites in Dawson is Dredge Number 4, the largest wooden hull dredge in North America. This machine you see here is responsible for pulling nine tons of gold out of the ground over its life from 1913 to 1959. Dawson is definitely one of the most unique cities in the Yukon, and if you get a chance to visit, you definitely should take it. After leaving Dawson, we headed back to Whitehorse in the Yukon, where we had to drop off the trucks. Welcome folks here to Whitehorse Toyota in the Yukon. So we have now done 5,600 kilometers with these two trucks, and it's our final day with the trucks. We are returning them now. So what we want to do is an after action damage report, because honestly, the Dempster just beats the heck out of vehicles and trailers. So I want to show you what the result is. We'll start here on the TRD Pro. And first of all, I will tell you that this truck held up pretty dang well. First of all, you will see a nice stone chip right up there on the windshield. There's a second little baby stone chip right there. No doubt uh, rocks are flying off of every single truck you pass on the Dempster and they're just going right into your windshield. Now around back, I can show you one thing here on the TRD Pro as well. In these tail lights, actually it's worse on the passenger side, you're gonna see right here, they have these little impacts, impacts. These are just stones. Once again, flying off of trucks, flying off of those big tires. Everyone that we saw on the Dempster who regularly drives that road has big mud flaps, even mid-mounted mud flaps. In this case, they're really stone flaps. So hey, this is uh, advice for anyone heading to the Dempster. Definitely get some of those big stone guards. Now let's go take a look at the TRD off-road though, because that one's definitely a little worse for wear. This truck was always in the back. It was just about always following the orange truck. So it took some bigger hits. Come on, I'll show you the grill. Right next to our lovely Toyota logo, yes, that is a hole punched right into the grill, right through the plastic. Now, no doubt this grill took a beating with a lot of other stones too, and it just has one chip to show for it. But yeah, if you're driving down that road following somebody, you're gonna end up with things like that. Now, as we go back, there was one tiny little stone chip up, up here on the windshield. 
but honestly not too bad on this truck. Um, as we get around to the back, once again, more stone chips flying up into the bumper. And we actually did have a bit of a piece of loose trim down here on the bumper. Now at this point, I will point out, like we have been, these are pre-production trucks that might have not been installed great from the beginning, but I do gotta tell you about it because it did shake loose. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we get to the trailer. If you're gonna pull a trailer up the Dempster Highway, get something that's heavy duty with real steel plating on the front, probably two axles and some bigger tires. Our trailer just straight up wasn't quite ready for that road. Take a look at this rock guard. Honestly, it wasn't doing much from the beginning and it's doing even less now. It snapped in a few places, totally pushed in. Uh, that really didn't work out great for this trailer. The wrap itself, I mean, you can't see it for the dirt, but the wrap has big chunks out of it all over the place because once again, it's just getting pelted. Now we get back here to the tires. You can see the fenders are totally bent up, once again, just from so many rocks. And then the tire itself is actually totally bald on the inside. Now we believe this is more because uh, the axle wasn't totally installed correctly on this tire. But even so, once you're out there and you're going along, if you have a problem like this, well, you got no one to help you. So you gotta just keep going till you get back to civilization like we did with a nearly bald tire. Thankfully, the tire made it here. Now, uh, I can't show you these, but trust me, these lights no longer work. There's a wiring loom underneath this trailer and it got destroyed. So no more trailer lights. Same deal with the tire on this side. Plus, there's also some plastic hangers over here on the doors up here on the trailer. They got totally blasted. They're also non-existent. This trailer completed one trip up the Dempster but it would not complete two trips up the Dempster. In fact, we were pretty worried about even getting it here to the dealership. So I think our big takeaway here, especially after you look at the trailer, doing a drive like the Dempster, it just beats on your vehicle. And although sure these Toyotas are chipped, a little bit uh, scratched up, they still made it and the trucks are definitely ready for another run. <laughs> and a huge shout out to Whitehorse Toyota for taking the trucks from this to this. It took the detailer a lot of work. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the end of our epic trip. We took these two 2022 Toyota Tundras over 5,000 kilometers. Now, at the end of this trip, I have to say, I think Toyota improved the truck in every way. It burns less fuel, it has more power, it has a nicer interior, and it's more comfortable. That's definitely a win-win in my books. And now I also have to give a huge shout out to Toyota Canada. They did fund this entire trip, but they didn't tell us what to say. We were able to deliver you guys the absolute truth of what happened along with our unadulterated opinions and Toyota Canada was okay with that, which to me means they trust their product and you know what? These two trucks did not leave us stranded on the side of the road. They got us there and back without a hiccup. And for that, I am thankful. So, like I said, folks, that is the end of this one. Now, please go below into the comments. Let me know what you think of the series and the Tundra. As always, while you are down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to Truck King to see which adventure we will take on next. See ya.